it was really amazing to see how these characters had evolved over these four movies, and probably even more than in the books. When I first read the books, that was a really attractive thing about all the characters, and, and for me, you know, Peta, um, obviously, uh, had a very strong arc, and, and I really saw him going through a really tough situation, and, and he had many highs and lows. Um, so yeah, I think that in the end, you know, he, he makes his way back to his original moral, uh, morally guided self, but you know he takes definitely a dark turn in the beginning. But when you have you know four movies to build a character arc, it, it's really uh, it's really nice to be able to explore all those different moments. Katniss's perspective changes so much because um, she really didn't wasn't focused on changing the world in the first movie because she didn't know any different. It's the world that she's always known. So it wasn't until she. Um, traveled and saw the unrest and the frustration in all the other districts that, um, and it started affecting kind of her own life and family that she, and she was directly affected that she started to kind of start to fight back. And then when she was faced with being the, the um, leader of this revolution, you know, she didn't want a war, she just wanted, she just wanted peace. And I don't think that she really thought that there was another option until District 13 presented itself and that there is, there is an entire army and a rebellion <coughs> and a hope of overthrowing the capital. Yeah, something I always loved about Gail was, you know, I mean, in the beginning, he's, he's, he's just such a good guy and he's prepared to stand up for what he believes in, but the first two parts of the story, he's kind of helpless to do anything and, you know, has to watch his friends go off into this horrible situation and, um, yeah, towards the end, he, you know, so much happens that he just becomes so fed up with the capital and what they're doing to his people and all the other districts that he kind of loses sight of what's, I think, what he used to think is right and wrong. And he's prepared to go to a, a more extreme level to, to fix this situation. And we finally get the Gail and Peter scene that we've been waiting, because we obviously haven't weren't in many yeah. scenes up until now, and they actually finally get the scene. What was it like finally shooting that scene with the two of you? It was, it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, to actually look at each other in the eye and speak yeah. <laughs> in front of cameras. Yeah, um, no, it was, it was, it was like, you know, we were always kind of separated with yeah. this thing in between us. <laughs> and, uh, and so... It's <laughs> nice, though, because it's the first time you see them talk yeah. to each other in a, you know, in a nice way. It was cool, too, because like, everybody builds up this like, rivalry thing of like, so oh, how do you guys... But it's like, it's not, that's not really even in the story. People like no. put that into it themselves. Yeah. Because that's how they see it, some people. But it really wasn't that way. And it was cool because that the scenes we have together in this really were not combative or any kind of rivalrous type situation. It was really, you know, a meeting of the minds and a really mature way to, to view the whole thing. I think. How do you guys approach the rest of your careers now? As far as you figure, okay, you got franchises out of the way. I can go do whatever I want now. Or um, I'm gonna try to tamper things down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not two franchises. I at the feel same like time. I just jumped off a cruise line and I'm looking for a little life raft. A little skipper, a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna roll the dice, see what, see where things land. Throw a dart in the dark, see what sticks. Well, that's Bob for apples. Cooler to come up with. Josh is a badass. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>